Dry, flaky, itchy skin is a common problem, which is being magnified in COVID times. Creams and ointments can provide some relief, but sometimes they're just not enough. There are other options, but they're not the first choice, especially in little ones. No mom in her right mind wants to medicate a three-year-old with an intractable itch. Mindful of this, a team of researchers based at the University of Manchester are on a mission to find a safe, effective, and cheap option to quell the itch. Now, for most sufferers, the root of the problem is the skin barrier is compromised. Adverse circumstances flip the switch, but genes pull the trigger. The implicated gene is the phalagrin gene, and now it comes in a number of variations. There's a super-duper version, there are a couple of average versions, and a dud. When a cell inherits a working copy of the phalagrin gene, adequate amounts of the protein are typically made, so the skin barrier is intact. Problems arise when a dud version of the phalagrin gene is inherited. It creates a phalagrin deficiency, and this phalagrin deficiency means that the skin is not able to keep things out quite as well as it should. Now, one dud can be weathered because the good version compensates. Two copies of the dud gene is a catastrophe. People with two bad versions suffer from a skin condition known as ichthyosis vulgaris. It's not fatal but it's not nice either. As I explained, the phalagrin deficiency means that the skin is not able to keep things out. All things. Chemicals, pathogens, allergens. Now, the unwelcome guests are handled. (laughs) Unfortunately, a trigger-happy immune system sets you up for the itches and ouches, and this can march on to bigger things. Now, you can't send your genes back. But you can play your hand better. Join us for this episode of Better Body Chemistry TV as we explore the Falagrin story and discover how to minimize the impact of this bad genetic hand. Better Body Chemistry TV is brought to you by Dr. Sandy, a scientist turned gremlin buster, helping you battle sugar gremlins, heffalumps, and other health horribles through better body chemistry. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health. So, how does the phalagrin gene work? Well, the gene programs skin cells to make a protein called prophalagrin. That's before phalagrin. Prophalagrin is rather big, so it needs to be processed and packaged into smaller bits. This happens inside keratohyalin granules. It's these smaller bits which are called phalagrin. The skin cells then shoot phalagrin-containing bundles out. As they stick on the keratin filaments, they form natural moisturizing factor. It is this that helps to create the skin barrier. Structurally, phalagrin is made up of lots of histidines. This is actually quite unusual. In fact, when prophalagrin was first discovered, It was called histidine-rich protein. So, what is histidine? Well, it's one of the amino acids that forms the building blocks of our proteins. There are 20 of them in total, and when it comes to these amino acids, some we can make from scratch, and others, well, we must import. Histidine is one that we must eat, although we do get a little help from our bacterial friends as well. Animal studies using radio-labeled L-histidine show that it makes a beeline for the skin. Here is an autograph of the skin epidermis. The skin proteins are the radioactive stripes. You can see that the radioactivity is quickly incorporated and then distributed over the next few days. Inspired by this, our team of researchers set out to see whether adding a little extra histidine to the diet might help improve the skin condition of people plagued with skin troubles. Our team signed up 24 people with a diagnosis of atopic dermatitis. The diagnosis was made according to the UK Working Party Diagnosis Criteria. Everyone in the study was given a little packet to add to their breakfast beverage. 
every day for eight weeks. Now, the packets were different. Twelve people got packets containing four grams of alhistidine. Twelve people got packets containing four grams of erythritol as the control. At the end of the eight weeks, their skin condition was checked and scored by both the dermatologist as well as by the patients themselves. Here is the dermatologist's assessment. The alhistidine helped. There was a 40% decrease in atopic dermatitis activity. And the benefits were seen while consuming the alhistidine and beyond. Eight weeks after stopping the supplement, the patients in the study were still better off than where they started. To put this in context, Topical corticosteroids, which are the standard conventional treatment for atopic dermatitis, give around the same level of benefit by taking out the immune system. So the alhistidine effect is not too shabby and a whole lot safer and cheaper than corticosteroids. So in my books, if you've got skin troubles, it is worth a try. Alhistidine supplementation at low doses is pretty safe. Maybe start with the supplement to boost your current filaggrin levels quickly and get some relief. If it works, it may not be necessary to routinely supplement, since this research suggests the effect is quite durable. Reserve supplementation for if you have a flare. Otherwise, just work at getting more in your diet. Most people consume around 2 to 2.5 grams per day. You will get a little more if you eat animal proteins, since these are the foods with the highest amounts. Histidine will improve your skin barrier, helping you create better body chemistry and better health. Interested in discovering more ways to create better body chemistry or need a little help getting your body chemistry on track? visit our website at www.betterbodychemistry.com, browse our library, or enroll in one of our courses or programs. The advice is simple to follow and based on real science, not hype. Know someone who's struggling with skin issues? Share this video with them so they understand what it takes to make a strong, healthy skin barrier. And if this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe to our channel so you catch future episodes of Better Body Chemistry TV. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health.